So, you've recently heard about Death Frontier 2 coming out the 31st of this month. So of course, you want to see its predecessors, aka Death Frontier 2D and Death Frontier 3D. Death Frontier 2D is of course unsupported, so there's no reason to play it. So you instead turn to Death Frontier 3D. So you give it a shot. You click into the sign up and of course you start playing. But what you don't realize is, right now, the marketplace for this game and the way you have to play it is a huge, big mess. Which is of course why Death Frontier 2 is being released soon. But you still want to give this game a shot regardless. So you know what? Let me be your guide in today's video. Let me show you what you need to do in order to survive, alright? So without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. So upon entering the inner city, you are immediately presented with soldiers, boxes, crates, and weirdly enough, a burning trash can, because why not? You explore the inner city for a long time and you realize that, man, there's just so much to offer in this game. So you play a little longer, but then eventually you decide to get deeper into the inner city, aka Doc Stockade, Preston 13. Ford Pastor, Sekronam Bunker. But then you realize something that is missing from your character. Something so important that every Death Frontier player lacks of in the Death Frontier community. That's right. Money. Without money, you are just a sad sap in the inner city. Only to be forced to beg and beg and beg. And only to be called a noob by the numerous players you turn to for help. Of course, they all make fun of you and just look the other way, which in turn pisses you off. But this isn't a money guide, this is a survival guide. So let's get back to the topic at hand. So before I get into the stats section, what I want to cover first is don't ever choose a soldier or any kind of profession that basically gives you a, neg a negative effect. For example, Soldiers gives you negative 50% or negative 25% experience and in turn gives you extra stats in the beginning. May look good at first, but when you are basically in a level 50 through 100, it gets very, and I mean very difficult to level up, in which case it causes you to rage quit and therefore you will die a lot. <laughs> so again, don't ever choose a profession that gives you negative 50% experience. Even with gold membership, the negative 50% or negative 25%, yeah, it's gonna be difficult to level up. Anyway, now that we got that covered, once you level up, right, you get to the highest, you know, percentage possible. You're giving stats, you know, five points on each section. The basically the the skills and the weapon stats. The first thing you should never ever do is basically scatter them. Me playing Death Frontier, you know, since like the 2D era, I used to do this. I was a kid. I understand. You think it's a freaking smart idea, you know? Put put two points here, put a point here, put two points there. You should be, you know, your character should be nice and even. This is in turn incorrect. What you basically want to do is focus on one category at a time. For example, you want to take more hits? Level up endurance. You want to have better weapons or armor? Level up strength. You want to have, uh, you want the weapon to do more damage? Put it in critical hit. Basically, this character would depend solely on what kind of playstyle you have. If you're more of a looter and a more of a boss hunter, then I recommend agility, critical hit, and of course endurance. All right, don't put it in, well, you can put it in strength, but basically what will matter is basically how much damage does your weapon do in terms of how fast it will kill it. You don't want to put two in critical hit, one in endurance, and then two more in, in agility. You know, that just sounds pretty stupid. All right, so again, focus on one category at a time and take it nice and easy. It's not a freaking race, it's a marathon, okay? You know, it's going to take a while to get you where you want, and of course, you know, it's going to be freaking annoying. Trust me, I've been playing this game for so long, I don't even remember the first time I logged in. <laughs> and of course, we have the weapon stats. The weapon stats is basically your build. What are you going to be? Are you going to be a loud guy, basically shotgun, grenade launcher, machine gun? Or are you going to be a looter, basically a silent weapon like a pistol, a sniper rifle, melee, etc.? Or you can be both, a gruder, you know, grenade launcher, minigun, or pistol, slash melee, slash sniper rifle. This is where you decide what you will be in a different tier community, alright? I, for one, am basically a gruder. I'm a boss hunter, and I'm a looter. 
or I'm a grinder slash looter. That's what I mean. So I, if you see my build, I have a quiet weapon, which is a pistol slash sniper rifle. I have a grenade launcher that basically helps me loot as to where, where when there's aggro in the building, I go behind the wall and I shoot the grenade launcher through the wall, thus killing all the aggro on the outside without risking any type of, you know, damage to my character. And of course, when things go apeshit, I take out my minigun. Again, depending what kind, what kind of player you will be, you know, play it smart and be intelligent of what you're also going to buy in terms of weapons. The biggest mistake many players do is they want the big bad boy way too early and thus they sacrifice you know money for damage and in case and in which case you know when you need to feed feed that minigun slash heavy weapon you will see that your bank only has like ten thousand dollars so yeah and 12.7 nowadays for a full box i don't know what it what it's going for but back then pretty much a box was twelve thousand freaking dollars for 12.7 mm of whole a full box and when I remember it, so yeah, be smart and when, and when choose your weapons, and basically don't sacrifice your, you know, your bank for one weapon, because at, at the end of the day, it's like a car. You're not gonna put all your money in a freaking Ferrari, and then you don't have the money to feed it. You know, it's, it's retarded. So, yeah, guys. Anyway, on to the next section. So you decided to be a little big boy and decided to move on from Asteas. Eventually, the bird would leave the nest. So of course, you're looking at the other apples and thinking, hmm, where should I go next? And of course, you go straight to Fort Pastor, which is what every freaking beginner does. And that's where basically the people end up quitting, because it's too crazy and it's too horrible. So let me tell you guys the things you should do before you decide to go to either Fort Pastor or Second Bunker. The first things first is learn the attack patterns of the infected. Once you have the attack patterns of the infected, you pretty much know how to play the game easily. Every freaking infected in this game has an attack pattern, whether it be just a smack, a hit from a little spider, or from a tantrum. Once you learn these attack patterns, basically you'll be able to outmaneuver them and more or less loot or boss fight without any problems. All right. And once you have this down, you can basically go to any outpost you want, because honestly the only thing that gets more difficult is just their speed and the damage that they put out. Other than that, most of their attack patterns don't really change in terms of, you know, credibility. So, yeah. And if you guys want to choose an outpost you want to start off, for, off with, I recommend going to Doc Stockade, then going straight to Fort Pastor, and then eventually going to Sacronum Bunker. The reason I don't really recommend Prekin 13 as well, because it's pretty much a dead outpost. I remember the first time I went over there, I thought it was like, you know, yeah, I'm leveling up, I should probably go to Prekin 13, like in order. But I basically wasted a lot of precious time that I could have used in Fort Pastor. And thus, you know, I basically off-tracked and it took me a little longer to reach level 100 than I should have. Again, I was a noob and I wish somebody would have told me to avoid Prekin 13 altogether. So yeah, forget about Prekin 13, just go to Dog Stockade, then go to basically Fort Pastor and then in the end go to Sacronum Bunker. And then once you reach Sacronum Bunker, you should pretty much more or less know how to play the game. The only issue that many people have nowadays is that they basically still haven't understood the attack patterns of the infected. I honestly never understood why this game was hard. I mean, yeah, sure, when you get overcrowded by these guys and you have no freaking powerful weapon, yeah, sure, you can die, but honestly, whose fault is that? Take it easy, go one step at a time. Again, it's a marathon, not a race. You'll eventually get there. Don't try to, you know, don't try to do a pay to win. Don't spend hundreds of dollars in this game. It's not worth it. All right, just take it easy. I mean, you eventually become, you'll eventually get OP. I mean, everything will get easy as, you know, the time goes on. And eventually, you know, you'll end up ending up a second on bunker and looting Southeast end zone like it's just a walk in the park. All right. So again, understand, you know, the attack patterns of the infected. Get a weapon more or less, you know, that's pretty good against these infected. And then once you have a decent build, make your way to four pastor and then go to second on bunker. All right. Don't try to race. Don't try to freaking overdo it. Don't try to follow your friends, because trust me, once you get your four pastor and you're like a level 10, man, or a second on bunker, you're level 20, don't even bother to beg in those areas, all right? Nobody will help you out unless they really feel bad for you. And let me tell you, when I say unless they really feel bad for you, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. There's not a lot of people of those left, all right? So again, for your own good, take it one step at a time. So let's recap on what we've learned so far. Number one, choose a profession that will help you in the nearby future. No soldiers, nothing that'll hinder your experience gains, all right? Number two, 
Don't scatter your points. This is a very severe thing you can do in the beginning of the game. Once you scatter your points and let's just say you go up, up against a boss or zombies you can't go against because of your abilities, then you're gonna regret it, alright? Then you're gonna be forced to buy credits which is way too expensive at the moment and then you're gonna be forced to rage quit. Number three, don't rush the game. Take it one step at a time, you know? Be nice. You know, it's, again, it's not a race, it's a marathon. Go to, you know, Doc Stocky, then four passers, then of course second on Bunker. If you skip step one, two, and three, you'll end up one of those guys that are just begging all freaking day. Which again, no offense, but come on. You can just restart the account, get a new account, and, you know, do it properly from the beginning. And of course, the most important one is no pay to win, alright? Do not do a pay to win. All right, it's just, it's just, just don't, don't spend on three hundred dollars in this game. It's, it's not, I mean, different tiers too coming up. It'll be stupid to do it. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot. Learn the attack patterns of the infected. Once you know the attack patterns of the infected and the bosses and all that, you pretty much know how to play the game on a very professional level. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. All right. Once you know how little spider hits, how tendril hits, how long arm hits, how rumbler hits or explodes, how black titan hits, etc., etc., etc. You will pretty much have no trouble, you know, protecting yourself in the in Fairview City, aka the inner city, alright? So again guys, this is just a very, very beginner guide for any newcomers to the Frontier 3D and or you know people who who have played 3D but never heard of these little advices that I put here, right? Again, this should be no brainers. If you guys think I'm lacking some part, leave it in the comment section below and also follow me on Patreon, you know, it'd be great. If you guys kept on supporting me, thank you to those, to those two patrons. Very appreciative. And also follow me on my Instagram down below, uh, killer 3 yt I do, I interact with my with my subscribers, with my fans a lot. I love doing it. <laughs> it's very fun. So yeah, guys, this is killer 3 signing off. And I'll be coming out with another video very soon. As good as quality as this one. All right. See you guys.